Friends? Who needs them? With the newest game, Stellaris Nexus, obliterating your friends has never been so easy. A turn-based strategy game themed around Stellaris, and with a similar amount of catastrophic annihilation. Getting into the game, the main mode of Stellaris Nexus is called Secession, and I'll explain what all this stuff means as we go on. What is really important is our faction, and when we go into here, you can see there are all different kinds of factions to choose from. There's the United Nations of Earth, a, you know, the, the boring faction, the Chinor Combine, which are basically just Amazon, rock people, jellyfish people, and all kinds of other stuff. What the faction we're going with is called the Ixodar Star Collective, which is out of all of these factions, the only hive mind. This gives them a whole bunch of different mechanics from all of the other factions and makes them pretty unique. It also allows us to do silly things like literally spawn planets out of nowhere. Yes, I'm not joking. So getting into the actual game mode itself, we have all of this different information. You know, I'm just gonna, just gonna not read because right here is our capital. And if we zoom out, we can see all the other factions in the game. And in the bottom left, we have a bunch of resources. First, we have support, which is normally for taking actions, but because we're a hive mind, we just don't care about that. The yellow gears are materials, which is just for building stuff. The green is for money, which because we're a hive mind, we don't really care about. Hurts me to say that as an American, I know. And then right here is our most important resource, which is pheromones. Our faction does not care about public support, and so we just use pheromones to take actions. Right here is essentially a deck of actions that we get to draw each turn, and the ones that we got was research, command, and explore. Each of them take up one pheromone, so one action point essentially, and moving fleets also takes up action points. So if I move one of my fleets down here, down to Kalmar, next to uh, Brazzaville, then we could also use an explore command down here, so the following turn, this will explore one of those question marks in the bottom corner. And then last, we will research, which uses research points in order to get us a technology. On the right side are all of these social techs, on the middle is the nanotechs, and on the left is the physics. Nanotech is especially really, really good for munitions, and munitions is basically our fleet capacity. So of course, I'm going to take 0G barracks in order to get six more fleet capacity, or munitions, which means that we'll be able to build even more ships. And by the end of this game, this faction is so ludicrously insane in terms of fleet capacity, we will just eat the entire world. So now in the bottom right, I could just end the turn, and everything will happen, and we move on to the next one. Our exploration also gave us some stuff, so I can get either plus two income for resources or plus two science, and I will take these science. Then down here with my ship, we could go ahead and drag it in uh, and then invade the planet. We've also got the ability to go down here and construct a building on one of our planets. So we could just add a factory on right here, which takes up one of these slots on the bottom, which is essentially the number of buildings that we can construct on each planet. Then we could just move our Corvette over to Brezzaville for another occupation. And because we're out of pheromones, we could just end the turn. Pretty much all of the other factions in the game don't use actions like that. They do use this influence. Uh, and, you know, obviously we don't care. We also don't really care about trading because why would I use money when I can eat you instead? Every turn, the cards that we draw, which are these edicts, are randomized. And we got one called Surge, which allows us to get even more pheromones on a given turn. And then Politics, which allows us to select any edict and just put that straight into our hand. So we could go with Construction in order to build another city and get more influence. The only reason that we do need support as a hive mind is you can see we're at plus zero right now. Each planet that we control costs one support per turn. And if we go into the negative, then planets are going to start rebelling. And while I certainly don't shy away from civilian casualties, it would probably not be a good idea right now. We can carry over a single pheromone per turn, so I can end the turn, and then we'll actually have four, because we carried over one. And we could just use that to go ahead and invade another planet. And also meet our neighbors, which are the Rodirans. Rodiran. The rat people. Above us as well is the warlike Kel'Azan, which are probably going to try and invade us and take the this planet over here, which is not going to help because I'm going to invade them. We've also got this insanely busted ability called Hostile Colonization. I can't use it right now, but I will show you what it does later, and it's kind of ludicrous. Although for the time being, we are just going to pull more space factories in order to produce more ships, which allows me to come over here and then start building capital ships. The different ships in the game are good against other different kinds of ships, so capital ships are good against raiders, raiders are good against carriers, which have ranged attacks, and so on and so forth. There's also giant titans that can destroy planets and other things like that. Oh, okay, so the Rodirans want a non-aggression pact, and they are going to give us some technology for it. Uh, in exchange for zero-g barracks, we can upgrade all of our ships. And I mean, okay. Not like diplomacy is going to stop me anyway, because I'm going to eat them regardless. But the big benefit of the hive mind is that they absolutely love to expand. They just love expanding everywhere they can. So we just want to take 
as many planets as possible because that's essentially their game plan. Our hero in the bottom left also leveled up, which we get for doing various things, for example, by having more star systems. So every turn we get plus one XP for every two star systems. And by leveling up, we get to choose essentially a talent. We can either go with Structured Hive, okay, that's not bad. Xenophobe, I mean, I like that. Or the obvious choice, Militarist. Unfortunately, the people next to us did colonize this planet, uh, and I'm just going to build a massive fleet and take it over. We also just want to keep mashing out these construction edicts to keep building more things. So factories on all of our planets, military munitions things, and luckily as a hive mind, we get to reinforce our ships and build new ones in any fleet, literally anywhere. So that means I get to reinforce my fleet right over here. I can reinforce this fleet up there. I can reinforce fleets pretty much anywhere, whereas other factions have to do it at star bases. So in the top left, you can see it says years to castle. And that's been ticking down for the past couple turns. What happens is that every 10 turns, there is a league council, which essentially scores all of our victory points. The first person to reach 100 victory points becomes emperor and wins the game. There's different ways you can get victory points. For example, by controlling the nexus that is in the center over here, or by spreading your culture, which we do by force. And then when we go here, we also have a bit of a diplomacy. Ah, uh, yes, authoritarian, have the highest support. Negative two. Have the highest cash stockpile. Negative three. So whichever council title we vote for becomes essentially the new goal until the next league council. So we're going to vote for this resolution down here, which just gives people plus 20% support and then submit our votes. And so the two things that won is authoritarian. So have the highest support income. No chance I win that. And also something to give us a little more support and make sure that our, our planets don't rebel because they're literally all about to do that. Right. So our neighbor has done this silly goofy thing called getting in my way. And by clicking over here, you know, declare war. They have a six fleet power and another six fleet power. We have 36 and 48. Not to mention that all of my fleets are extremely expendable and I can pretty much just throw them wherever I want. I do need to keep building things that get me support though. So more cities, more embassies, because if we don't have enough support, we're just gonna lose all of our planets to rebellions. Also, I know I'm invading these guys, but uh, hey, hey rat people, can we just do a little, uh, a little diplomacy? So now when we end the turn, we can, oh, okay, the, the Rodirans are gonna break a pact with us. Not very surprising considering they are literally Skaven. Go, oh, actually someone is gonna attack the Nexus over here and lose horribly. And then we're gonna attack that random tiny little fleet over here and watch them get absolutely obliterated. Oh, and then we and then we accidentally are shooting the planet a couple of times, you know, just, just for good measure. And we'll win the fight up here as well. And it seems like they're also going to try and counter attack us, which is literally not gonna happen. So invading planets does actually require fleet. So you can see this takes two out of six right now because they have three garrisons on there. So by dragging my ships, we do actually take some attrition in order to invade the planet, but it's really not that bad. I'm also just gonna ask the Skaven, hey, can, hey, can we just do another non-aggression pack? I know you broke it literally last turn, but I'm willing to trust you. Oh, great, yeah, and, and the Skaven think it's a great idea for a military agreement. And as you can see, another battle's gonna take place, and we're pretty much just going to buzzsaw through them instantly. So we can use politics to get pretty much any edict we want, but it does cost two pheromones instead of one. We'll just research repulsors right now in order to decrease construction costs. Then we could just use this again, do another research edict, and see if we can get something else. This is great out right now because we just need to wait a little bit longer to get the higher level technologies. So we'll go with quantum theory in order to get advanced laboratories. So now we can research again and get laser cannons. I'm, I'm kind of surprised we didn't already have that. In order to just give our ships even more power. All right, so we are gonna have a pretty big battle over here that I'm not entirely sure we win uh, versus a station and another fleet. Although the, the station died immediately. Right, so we just leveled up again. I kind of blew all of our ships into their capital and we somehow took it over. I'm also at minus three influence, which is probably pretty bad. Our next level up will just be subspace communication so we can get a bit more science every time we use surge, which just gives us more pheromones. And then I'm also gonna try to trade with some people because you can use money in substitution for support. I guess you just bribe your population, but we could also do a bit more research. And unsurprisingly, I'm completely ignoring social in order to get antimatter explosives. Okay, great. It looks like we've gotten to a new league council. And yeah, look at that. Everybody else having 22 income, zero, which technically makes me the least authoritarian person in the galaxy, if you think about it. I am gonna vote for producer because we control the most rich and industrial planets by a long shot. Oh my God, we just have so many votes on the galactic council that we just strong arm into any policy we want. All right, now is the time for the real battle for their capital. And we 
probably really need to win this. Antimatter explosives coming in pretty good. Oh, great. And the jelly people want to trade us some technology. This seems like a fair trade. Uh, they want to give us a university for an antimatter bomb. Now, I'm not really scared of them, so I am actually going to say yes. But I also desperately need to make peace with these people. And uh, I mean, yeah, they're probably going to accept it. As a matter of fact, I'm actually just going to demand their technology from them as well. And I'll just give them all my council votes while I'm at it, because why not? Democracy, schmodocracy. I like how I have done nothing but build embassies on the other people's capital, as if we're using these embassies in any way. We also just explored and found a new, whenever you use culture to form planet gain plus, where we don't care about culture. But the reason I wanted to make peace is because by conquering their planets, we were actually incurring problems with our support. So for each foreign planet we control, we do take an additional minus one while we're at war with that faction. Wait, I'm sorry. They just broke the peace agreement? It's been like one turn. And now the jellyfish want a military agreement and my laser cannons. Okay, well, they broke the peace agreement, but I don't really know what happened because we're still not at war. Works for me. I'm also just gonna come over here and invade New Prague. There we go. Add another uh, special planet to our empire. As you probably noticed, the different planets have different icons. So this one is for industrial planets. This one is for rich resource planets. This one is for advanced planets. And this one is for populous planets. Industrial is great for research and shipbuilding. Populous is good for influence. Rich resources is for, well, raw resources. And advanced planets can kind of do anything. Hey guys, so I know I invaded you. You know, I took your, your home world. But uh, yeah, how do you feel about a military agreement? Oh, they, they feel pretty good. Right, so I can use my politics edict in order to get a culture edict, which costs a ton of influence, but allows us to remove someone else's culture from one of our planets. So we'll just pop it on there and... Customs. Did that just say erasing local customs? If it didn't, it probably should have. We can also level up our hero again, and instead of merchant guild, shadow council, blah, relentless industrialists. Hmm. And our research is so insane that we're up to level five, so we can just get a star citadel to make all of our uh, star bases even more powerful. I have done nothing but build astro universities and embassies in every single location I can. Because as soon as I go to war with these people again, my influence is going to tank. But hey, Hey, we'll just ignore that and do more research. Capital ships plus four attack on all of them? Okay, now, now we just bulldoze everyone. We could also use another cultural edict to just erase the home culture of their capital. Sucks to suck. And now we get to another star council. Where, okay, so the Vor are in the lead. They actually have a lot more victory points than us. But luckily, we get another 12 for controlling the most rich planets. Also, I, uh, I have zero voting power. Probably something to do with destroying all of my neighbors. Destroy the most hostile ships ships in combat, well, I could do that. It's important to remember that destroying my neighbors is not necessarily the main goal because we do want to get those 100 victory points. But for our empire, it just so happens that destroying our neighbors is very helpful for that. We also have these espionage edicts, which we could use over here, which give us a whole menu of things to do. We can do a coup on the planet, but for right now, we're just going to start stealing technology. I can also come over here with politics and get hostile colonization. So this ability is specific to this character and the hive mind, and it's where we can just take any one of these neutral systems that has no planet on it and literally just materialize a planet on top of it, allowing me to turn all of the normally useless systems into extremely useful systems. Right, well, it's that time of the year again where I declare war on my name. Oh yeah, I, could, I have to break all of my pacts. Anyways, and now we can just move 128 fleet power and another 72 fleet power and just destroy the entire faction. Also, I love the fact that I've just been deficit spending this whole time. I've had negative energy credits for, I think, the the entire game. I'm also going to do a bit of a questionable trade with the jellyfish people. We'll give them our star citadel technology in exchange for personal replicators to get even more influence. All right, and now we can just take our one massive fleet, come in here and destroy the- wait, why- why- who are you? I didn't even realize that I had allies. I- I kind of just figured everybody hated me. In fairness, I don't think that is a wrong assumption. Right, well, unfortunately, they do have a ton of military units on all of their planets. I'm trying to invade them, but it takes quite a while. But we can keep using hostile colonization, just plop another random hive over here, and then keep moving to try and totally take them out. And I also forgot about one of the last technologies in the physics branch. You know, all those espionage actions, stealing money, stealing technology, converting people's star bases. Well, I have a new plan and it's literally just blow up the planet. Works like a charm. Well, if you don't live on the planet. It's nice that everyone is still willing to enter into military agreements with me. These guys are even gonna give me all their votes in the next council. Okay, and these guys are also gonna give me all their votes in the next council. All right,
right, well, we are gonna try and take back our planet over here, which, well, I mean, everybody blew up. Works for me. All right, so we've leveled up again. Now we can get advanced pheromones to get plus an additional influence every turn, which gives us a grand total of plus four every turn. And now as our last technology in the physics branch, or at least I think the last technology, a giga cannon to give everything plus six attack. And then we'll just waltz over here and give it to these guys. Oh my God, a hundred immediately. All right, so we're back to the star council and still nobody has gotten the nexus, which is kind of funny given, you know, it's the, the name of the game. Well, luckily we get to do a little democracy and with our 41 votes, literally vote anything into existence. Environmental board control. I will immediately do that so that it is not possible for anyone to get this uh, demobilization initiative. Minus 40% fleet power. I don't think so. And that gives every single planet one more space in order to construct stuff. Also, the, these guys literally want to give me combat augments or planet killing bombs. I don't think so. I've been doing nothing but get construction edicts and then use them on all kinds of remote hives because all of our planets are just insanely developed at this point. We can build core mines, which is plus three materials. We're up to 38 income and it's only going to keep getting higher. Okay, thank God. They have so many different military armies that I had to bring 104 Corvettes in here just to invade this planet. We just lost 70 fleet power just bombing planets, but you know what? Acceptable. Also, I'm going to get 31 victory points at the start of the next council. Okay. I have to just keep building more and more ships because we are throwing everyone into the meat grinder right now. Okay, and it looks like we have leveled up to our last level. And of course, we are going to get innumerable. For every system you control, gain plus four munitions and create a size plus two Corvette fleet. Now, I'm not very good at math, but uh, I control a lot of systems. And that's an ability, by the way. I can keep using that over and over again as soon as I draw it. Right, so I just got innumerable, and now I could go Damn. ahead and use it and... Oh my god, I didn't realize they creates a Corvette fleet on all of my systems. I thought it just increased the size. I literally have a fleet in every single... I have 147 munitions. And 48 of them came from this turn. And the best part is, I'm just gonna do it again next turn. We're also gonna have a pretty big battle over here. But luckily, I think our allies have come in. People, again, I still didn't know that they were our allies. Great, so now we're on to the League Council. And I don't know how many points we're gonna get here. I think everybody else is probably gonna get more. Okay, I take it back. Have the largest number of 41. We literally have more than the next two combined. And we've destroyed the most fleets. That's that's not surprising. And of course, with my 53 democracy modes, we're just gonna we're just gonna throw it all onto farsighted to have a presence on the highest number of star systems. When my ultimate literally puts a fleet on every single star system. Also, until the next Galactic Council, all empires gain 30. Okay. Right, now I can just use my remaining influence and invade all of the rest of the fleet. So, boom, boom, and just like that, that is almost everything gone. They only have one system over here, New Proc, didn't realize they took that, and I think my ally is gonna come over and kill them anyway. I also did a little fun thing, and over here on this planet that is now neutral, sorry, neutral planet, my bad. Oh, and now I can go and get the military tradition technology, plus one army and plus two munitions for every system. Oh my god. I cannot physically reinforce all of my fleets because I just have too many. I'm literally just walking up to random fleets and just throwing, all right, throw 13 more ships on. Why not? Oh yeah, here's another fleet over here. Just throw 13 more ships on. I'm not even close to my maxed out. I have just been building so many mines all over the empire. We're at 60 material income practically, and I can't even spend all of it. I mean, I'm just like, we're gonna lose a fleet over here. Who cares? Two more just immediately materialized to take its place. We could even go over here and just hostile colonize on a random planet over here. Why not? New... It has 99 army defense. That can't be intentional. Okay, the Qin War Empire just declared war on... Uh, wait, they're literally on the other side of the galaxy. Guys, I don't care how many times you ask me to blow up planets. I'm not gonna do... Well, I mean, I'll, I'll blow up planets as I want. At this point, I'm just building galactic monuments to give me plus three victory points, because why not? I have so much material income. I could just keep using construction. We're making 24 research from our capital. I've somehow hit my munitions capacity, but I mean, it's, it's not gonna be for long. Okay, it looks like the jellyfish people are actually going to war with us now, which I did not expect, but we should be okay. They're actually knocking down our fleet capacity a decent amount, but luckily I've put two fleets right here because we need to invade the Nexus for the next uh, go-round. 
The next test will give us all the victory points we need to actually win, but currently we are at war with basically most of the galaxy. Oh, and now another empire is declaring war on me. Well, that's uh, that's not very surprising. And we're also gonna get ranged attack. You see, there are carriers which ha can attack from the adjacent systems, but our ships are just too beefy to care. Also, we found a fallen empire here. Oh, and, and the game just gave it to us because we colonized the planet with our hive. I'm sorry, what? We are so close. All right, this is the last one before we need to take the nexus. We are at 96. The problem is even if I hit 100, we need to wait until the next league council to actually win the game. And seeing as literally none of these actually help us get the victory points we need to win, we need to take the nexus. So I would absolutely love a clean slate just to cancel all packs between all- Oh my god, it actually worked. Okay, but it looks like it didn't stop people from being at war with us. But hey, that's no problem because all I have to do is Confirmed. click this button and oh my god, 70 more fleet power. We have 108 plus just from this ability. I'm also just building military factories because they cost materials to get more munitions. I have basically infinite materials, so I'm just building military everywhere. 120 fleet power. Sure, why not? Ah, yes, another hostile colonization. We'll just chuck another hive over there. We, we have basically the entire top right corner of the map, and we are just going to swarm over the Nexus. I mean, our ships are so bad at fighting, but it doesn't matter because we have practically 300 munitions capacity. Okay, thankfully the Nexus doesn't really have any garrison, so we can just plop it right on there, and now we control the Nexus, which will give us enough points next turn to actually win the game, although we, it is extremely close. We're also gonna get artificial learning to get AI fabricators that give us plus 20 munitions per building. We're basically just being attacked on all sides at this point. Pretty much everyone is trying to come fight us, which is not very surprising. And most especially, this faction right here, their capital has been a bit of a thorn in my side. So it fits figures that I'm going to spend all of my fleets to invade this one planet and uh, oh hey, what's that? Oops. Also, we could just go ahead and pop that innumerable. There we go, 351 fleet power. I mean, I could reinforce basically every single one of my fleets every turn to just plus 13. And all of these are raider fleets, so they are total trash, but it doesn't matter at all. Right, so as long as we can hold on to the Nexus this turn, we will win. But if the Vor or the Glebsing get control of it, that would actually be really bad. Wait, so if I give our raiders a Giga Cannon, what does that do? Oh my god, that almost doubled the power of our core. Vets. All right, we also built a galactic monument, which is great. So we are at 99 victory points. All right, we're gonna lose 120 power of ships right here, I think, but it, it really doesn't matter because I'm just gonna rebuild it in like three seconds. Okay, now we're at 102 victory points, but again, we just need to survive until next turn, holding on to the Nexus, and then we'll be okay. There are fleets encroaching in on us at pretty much all sides, except I have 700 fleet power sitting on the Nexus, and I'm not even maxed out. And we could even just research star holds because, you know, why not? Now we can reinforce any number of ships in the same system all at once. Right, and so the end of this turn, now we just need to hold on. I'm surprised they're even trying to attack at this point. We just have vastly too many ships. And now we get to score everything as the final thing. We control the Nexus, so that's 117, 119. We even have the highest whatever income, which is insane. And we've already won all the other ones, meaning we have barely eked out to victory. I mean, if we didn't hit 100 points this turn, the Vor would have, and we would have lost. So at the end of the game, then we can see all of the scores. We have 123, so we came in first, and then second minister, third speaker, consul, praetor, and senator. Oh, I remember these guys. They died. I love looking at the stats like it's a StarCraft game and, and seeing empire size. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Support income, literally doesn't matter. And then material income. Holy Jesus. Ah, yes, I remember the great munitions upkeep boom of 2023. And if nothing else, I think our military power graph tells the story. There is a lot of factions in this game, and all the different leaders do tend to play really differently. I also ended up playing this game with the Smithing Brit, Let's Game It Out, Azor, Lollipop G, and Ambiguous Amphibian. I didn't really cover it in this video because I wanted to give a more detailed explanation in terms of what I was doing, but if you want to check out their perspectives of the multiplayer game that we did, all of their channels are linked in the description, and it was a ton of fun to record with all of them. Thank you to Paradox for sponsoring the video, and thank you for watching. Peace. Or peace. Ah, oh, we don't do that here. Goodbye. That's what I meant.